Hi, David. Welcome to today's, to today's Lunch and Learn. We're just going to go ahead and give people a few more minutes to see if anybody else is going to join here. You know, I know it's kind of lunchtime and people may be grabbing food as they sit down in front of the camera here. Um, so give us just a few minutes and then we'll go ahead and get started for today's Lunch and Learn. Uh, if you've got any questions, go ahead and feel free to post that into the chat now or the Q&A as well. And then here in a few minutes, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, I guess that works too. I was about to type it into the chat. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was trying to get there there myself. Somebody must have beat me to it to unmute you there. Do you have any questions for today? Or are you just kind of in here to see what's going on? Uh, I do have a question. Um, is there a way that I can create uh, that I can create a flow that does some stuff and then have it execute a service host manager restart and then resume after the restart? Should I do an API call in the middle of your flow? Um, more like, so uh, when we install decisions at clients, some of our people are not the greatest in the world at it. So, um, and we, there's a, a bunch of different steps to configure it for HTTPS. And then we have a couple of custom modules that we install. So I'm trying to write a flow that can automate some of these things, but at various points, it requires me to restart the service host manager for it to pick up that change. So I guess I'm trying to write a flow to say, go grab my custom modules out of a network directory, stick them in the custom modules folder and decisions, restart the service host manager, install them, and then do, I don't know, a couple of other things, right? So I'm wondering, can I, in that flow, can I restart the service host manager and then, and then it basically pick up and resume the execution of that flow once it's restarted? Does that make sense? Yeah, I got you. Um, next question for you. I know we've probably played like 20 questions to figure out exactly what the best solution is here for you. Um, yeah. Do you want this to happen as like sequentially, or is this kind of a scheduled job that's going to be ran through to where it's the same time every day or every like X amount of minutes? Uh, so it, it'd probably be the first of those options because realistically, okay. this would just be a, like a one time startup flow on either an installation or an upgrade to go validate settings and make sure that everything is set correctly. Right. So I thought about trying to do it as a as a startup job, but I only really need it to happen once. I don't need to happen every single time that I restart it, right? So then I thought, well, maybe in that startup job, I have a it does that, but it has a rule to go check for something like a a flag or the existence of something to know. I only need to process. I only need to process the rest of this flow if I see that that's not checked or something like that. You know what I mean? Like a boolean value. Yeah. Um, do you have any of that section off via a like subflow? Um, my thought process there is that maybe if we have it section off in a subflow, it's basically taking that information through the subflow there, and then as soon as it's processed through that subflow, that's when it goes ahead and does the connection for you. Um, is it? You said you want it to happen inside decisions. So it doesn't necessarily be an API call that needs to go out. It just needs to be for the module there. Hmm. Yeah, it's almost like I, I want our people to just install decisions and go through the installer and not really pay attention to what they're <laughs> what they're doing because some of them can't be trusted to do it right. Even when, they <laughs> even when they're following a checklist. Um, but all that stuff is just programming logic and it's kept in settings files, right? So if, yeah. I, if I just run through the decisions installer and then, I mean, I can teach them how to run a flow, right? All they have to do is say, go run this flow. And it says, okay, let me go check settings.xml and make sure that 
all the right things are in the right place. And if they're not, then manipulate that file and restart the service host manager for it to pick up the change, right? Okay. Um, I feel like this would be a simple answer for somebody else. Um, right now, I don't know the right answer. I've actually gone ahead and reached out to somebody else to see if they've got a moment to go ahead and hop on here with us and ask that question. Um, while I'm working on getting that answer for you, David, is there anything else that you're working on right now or is it just that one thing? Uh, let me. <laughs> Let me pull up my uh, let me pull up my instance here and see what other random tabs I might have open that I may have questions about. <laughs> uh, oh, store. Okay, so the the other thought that I had with kind of with this was. My understanding is that there is a way to that a flow can go into a stored state, right? Is there a way that I can, I guess, force that flow into a stored state at some point inside the flow? And then I was messing around with, well, let's just leave it at that, right? Is there, is there, or do you know of a way that? to that I can store a, set the flow into a stored state like is what, it just one like flow do you want or, the, or, I'm sorry is it just like one process that's been ran through or is there multiple different um data points being ran through that process at once um I guess let's just keep it simple right so let's okay. say I want to I have an input that's a a string and I manipulate that string. And then I want to say, I want to put the flow into a, I want to save that, right? Like whatever things that I've done up in the flow up to that point, I sort of want to store it and then come back later and execute another piece of the flow that may append, like add another string onto the end of it, right? Okay. Uh, I'm trying to work backwards. Uh, so my brain's kind of set to the asynchronization jobs where we've got it to where it's not going to go ahead and start that job before it passes through to the next. Um, uh, anybody else on the panelists, if you guys have any insight to this, go ahead and pipe up here. Um, I'm trying to just kind of work backwards inside my head. So we've got information running through and we want to actually be able to pause that job before proceeding to the rest of the flow there. Yeah, there's a pause, there's a pause flow step in there. Right. There's a checkbox on that guy that says uh, store flow data on pause, right? So I, I was experimenting with that yesterday and I can do my things up to this pause step and I have that check save flow data on pause, right? Okay. Cool. This only lets me do it based on uh, a resume, like a time span, right? But I really just want to pause it and then manual, like manually or through the use of another flow, tell it to start going again. So you want like um, a button where somebody's like, all right, go ahead and resume this flow. And then that triggers it to proceed, right? Yeah, see, I was thinking if I did that, because let's say I have a, a couple of string manipulation steps prior to this, right? I just have one that says, hello world, period. And then a step that strips the, the period off to where I just have hello world and then I pause the flow, right? Well, when I do that and then debug it if i go over to the oh this is seven so this looks a little bit different if i go to the flow management oh, that is a good question which version are you on i'm on 6 15. You're on 6 6 15. Yeah. okay cool and if i go over to the the system folder and the the flow management dashboard i can see that that flow is now 
stored. It shows up in my list of stored flows, right? So my thought process, um, and I've got somebody who said he'd be on here in just a few minutes to go ahead and help us answer some of your questions here. But I'm almost wondering, since we can go, and go ahead and do that select from flow, if we could actually have a form of, um, of some sort pop out where it's, or like the, the, the button per se, that then goes ahead and captures that information and then it runs it once we've got the information that says like resume again. Oh, I um, see. You're going to use a form as a break in between there. Maybe. Um, that's where my thought process is going. We might have a different idea that comes in here in a minute. Um, but that's kind of what I'm seeing is maybe we go ahead and since you want somebody to manually push it through is that we actually add a form allowing them to do that. Um, another thought I just got, what type of data structure are you using for the information passing through? Mm. Not really using a data structure. It's more like just a string. Okay. Um, what I was going to say is I know some data structures, like um, I believe it's case entities, are going to allow you to set up those user actions to where you can actually go ahead and do like those manual entries there for that action. But again, it would be like a, a flow that comes through um, to go ahead and resume that information again. Um, you're asking some really great questions today. Um, I've already made sure that Sabrina's uh, writing all this stuff down. And like I said, I've got somebody joining us here in a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and see if there's a different way to go ahead and have this resume other than like a constant time frame coming through. Um, we may try. The only problem I see with a form coming through here, which is why I don't like the idea of the form is we would actually need the form before it resumes again, not yeah. after this resume portion here. Yeah. Um, I guess the other thing that I guess my head goes to is if I, is there a way that I can store flow data, right? Like, or a step that I can store it for, let's say, uh, like if I have steps and I get up to a point and I say, okay, right here, right now, I want to save all of my flow data and all my variables at this point for future use, right? I don't know if that makes I sense. I mean, no, I got you. Um, so flow data, um, what data points are you looking to save? Is it information about like when the flow starts when you talk about flow data? Uh, it would be more like if I had a if I had a step, like if I had a, a merge to plain string step in there, mm -hmm. and I, I merged two strings together. Can I store what the output is for that specific flow execution or basically like a flow tracking ID, right? Because that's the, the actual execution of that particular flow at that point in time, right? Yeah, um, I would almost do like a create data step where we then can go ahead and um, this would be building out a data structure though. Um, so if you don't have data structures, this may not be the best option. Give me just a second. Let me kind of go through my thought process here and then we'll try another way. Sure. Um, but we could always have it come through to create that data, have it go ahead and do a um, data structure here. Or if we've got a data uh, field variable that we wanna call it, we could do that. So that way, like the ID you're talking about, we can go ahead and create that data and then save it off, um, whether it be a process folder or a data structure there. Um, how are you looking at going ahead and retrieving that ID later on? Um, that I was going to use another separate flow to grab that, right? Okay. Cool. So we'll need um, like a process folder at the very least to go ahead and actually store that ID at. So right. that way we can go ahead and fetch for the process folder and then bring that ID down through. Got it. Okay. I think that's where I was. At going. that point, we may be able to use that create data stuff instead of that pause flow where it just creates that data. And then you have like, since you're talking about that second flow anyways, have it do the second flow where it says, all right, now I need to pull that data or the ID back through, and we're going to finish out this process here. Got it. Yeah, right. That's what I was. 
I think that would be a better one to do the create data versus the pause flow, I think. That way you can also have those two different buttons. Are you working off of a decisions dashboard or you um, do you have decisions embedded in your platform right now? Uh, working on the decisions platform. Beautiful. So what I would do is have those different um, steps per se to where we process it through that one flow, it creates the data, and then a second kind of like run flow step that allows us, or button, I guess, step, um, a run flow button that allows us to go ahead and trigger the next one to send that um, information through the rest of the flow. Mm, nice. Okay. Um, it looks like we had Tyler go ahead and join us here. Um, real quick, David, can you go back through and talk again when um, uh, Tyler, Dave was talking earlier about how he actually has in the middle of his flow, he wants to go ahead and um, send information out to the decisions settings server um, to go ahead and see if a module is up to date and if we need to make updates, make those updates and then restart that server again. Is that right, David? Did I cover everything? Uh yeah so we uh i guess e e each of our clients has a like they're not hosted they have their they i mean they have like a an individual on on-prem decisions server right so i i want to be able to create what well, i mean i don't know if this is a, the right term or not but uh a, a start or a startup flow that when they run the decisions installer they basically just run through that and hit next for most of it and then once it comes up they run a flow that i can go check various things like the settings.xml file and say are all the right values that i need in there in the right place and if they're not update them and then restart the service host manager and then resume that flow, the execution of that flow to go do some other things, like make sure that custom modules are installed and then maybe restart again, right? So I guess the real question is, is there a way I can create a flow, restart the service host manager and have it survive that and then resume executing once, it's, once the system comes back up, if that makes any sense? It does. The no problem is when you restart the service host manager, of course, it pauses everything that's in action. I'm trying to think, is there a way to automatically kick a flow back off that is in progress? Yeah, so I guess my where my head went with that was I, I understand that you can, that there are certain things that would put a flow into a stored flow state. And then if I went to uh if i went to system and i forget the exact tree but basically in flow management there it, sh it shows me a list of stored flows right correct which is which it does but the problem is i'm thinking the way to automatically kick off which flow you want to from stored flows you want to kick off automatically yeah so that one um i would if i see i have uh fl flow one where i'm manipulating the xml file and then initiating the shm restart right mm -hmm. and so once i restart it i guess theoretically that would it would pause it and store it at that point but i know the flow name and i know where it stopped right well so, here's what you have to do you'd probably have to you know once you kick off that flow the first time get that flow name you know the flow grid yep store it in a database okay in the database table then you create a scheduled job correct that yep. every you know 30 seconds every minute goes and looks for any flows in that table which have not been completed yeah it kicks that flow back off right yeah so that's where I, that's where my head went is to because that flow is i mean it's already natively being stored by decisions with the flow tracking id and the step the step tracking id right Yep. So there in internal services, there is a step to restart flow at step. At step. Yep. And it requires the flow tracking and the step, ID. the step, the tracking step ID, which I would have at that point. 
-hmm. And if I just create a startup job that references another flow, that's a startup job that references that flow name and then says, go get the most recent execution of that flow name from, uh, from stored flows. And the way I was doing that is just grabbing uh, a run report step to run oh. that flow management report and then it output it as. You can do it that way. I thought it'd be easier just, you know, right before you restart the SHM is create a quick database table of the exact store it. I see. store it quickly. And then, you know, and then you don't have to worry about doing all that run of flow stuff. You just simply fetch the details from that one little table run it and then go in there and delete the table delete the role of the table or say completed i see and then okay so i had tried i had kind of gone down that path mm -hmm. and i had tried that with my the first thing i tried was with this pause flow step right um because in, in my head i was thinking okay if i do this this is the only way that I currently know of that I can put that flow into a stored state to where I'm using it. I know for certain it's going to do that because I'm using a step to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I built my little test flow to resume the, the flow at step. And it would come and basically resume on the pause step. And then because I resumed it, it wasn't stored anymore, but I think it went back to the pause step instead of advancing the to step. the next yep. step after right. that, right? right. Um, do you think if I went that way to just have a, a thing to restart the SHM, would it, would it do that and just restart the SHM again? Cause I'm picking it back up on that step or that whatever subflow I create to do that, or would I need something else to try to advance it past that? If that makes any sense. It does. So there's, there's a couple ways to do this is to, is you could you know get the step ID and restart on that step, or you could create everything past that SMH restart as a subflow. Mm -hmm. And then your scheduled job or what your startup flow is, it says, okay, is make a flag where you do the create data that says, okay, this is this is create data now flag it says, yes, please run this flow. True. And then you know that bam. You fetch the details. Is this one data on true? Start this other flow. Oh, I see what you're doing. You're okay. So basically, just store a Boolean flag in the data structure, and in that so like when it comes back up on your startup job, reference that to see if it's checked or not. Yep. And if it's I, checked, tr okay. it's checked true. You kick off the next flow. That is your check modules three start SMH flow. And then you know after that one's done, you have another Boolean flag. Okay, is this checked true or not? And the schedule job says if this flag on this, this flow ID is checked true. I got it. Okay. Kicks okay. off the next flow. Man, I'm such an idiot. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Okay. No, there's a there's a thousand things a way to do different ways and decisions. Always a thousand ways to do things. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. I got you now. David, does that kind of coincide with the, the question that we're kind of um, working through with the pause flow? And I told you maybe do the create data. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's all okay. it's all intertwined. Hmm. I think I think what I might do is take that one step further on a start, like just create a data structure. If I know these flow names or flow IDs, I can just stick those into a table with a Boolean that they've been executed or not, and then have something that goes through that data structure and like on the startup job and says, has this been done? Has this been done? Has this been done? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. Anything else for us today? Say so you're the you're the only attendee here who showed up, so it's kind of like a one-on-one -on -one training right. session for you. <laughs> That's demoralizing. You guys got the short you guys got the short end of the stick with only me today. No, nah, you asked some really great questions. Definitely made our brains work. That's what matters. What else do you have for us? 
David's a smart one who comes on Thursday because everybody comes on Monday and Tuesday, so he gets all his questions answered quickly and easy because he comes on a Thursday. <laughs> well, yep, I, there I try we go. to come on Mondays and Tuesdays too, but usually those are heavy. Uh, those are heavy meeting days, so sometimes I can't make it. Let me see if I have any other ones that I was fiddling with. Uh, okay, so we have a couple of custom modules that that we we basically once we install decisions, we grab those custom modules, throw them in the custom modules folder, and then restart the service host manager. So rather than manually doing that, I created a flow that will grab those modules from a directory location and automatically drop them in there. And I guess I'm curious what the what the right process is, right? So once I once I put them in there, I then need to restart the service host manager for it to recognize that they're there. And then I can use the install module step to actually install it instead of having to go through the UI and click the install button, right? Correct. Okay. The only, th the only caveat I would say to that is without going through the UI UX, if there's any errors, by using that step, it's harder to see the errors. It's going to bomb. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only problem with going that well. Okay. Especially when you're probably talking lots of clients and a lot of different things. Of course, you can say, okay, on the air step, do this, do this right here. Yeah. And then it's other functions. You're not at the screen where you could do the UI UX handle it quicker. You're doing it post. I gotcha. Uh, oh, okay. So <laughs> sorry. Next one. Um, so when they, let's say a, a, a client already has a pre-existing decisions instance and they're going to upgrade. And along with that upgrade, we need to basically make it configured for HTTPS, whereas before it was just HTTP, right? So there's a couple things we need to do settings wise, like I think in the in the settings file and in the web config file to be able to make that happen. And manipulating those are, I mean, that's not hard, um, but I'm pretty sure that we also have to go create a new and update uh, IIS bindings, right? Yes. Um, so I was thinking I can do that with, a PowerShell script. Yep. This is um, the way you get it, the PowerShell. You can't do it. We don't have a step to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's where my head went to do that. Um, so in order to do that, I was going to kind of follow the same thing of installing my custom modules and just say, have me a little flow that does install decisions.powershell. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but then I need to go. Oh, where was it? It's in system somewhere uh, to create. I think it's designers, right? Like you have to create a PowerShell project yep. to be able to create a PowerShell script, right? But right. I guess what I want to do is when I when I imp I want to import a a module by itself to do all this to install these things and and install my custom modules and stuff so it's almost like a a custom module to do all of the other things right but in that in that first custom module i would have all of my flows and powershell scripts and other things like that do, uh, i guess i'm wondering what's the what's the right order of operations here right like do i if i can i import that module with those powershell basically those objects in it without having already installed the powershell module and just no. install it and then it will know or i have to have powershell installed first you gotta have powershell installed first so to do this what i would suggest is 
you know, install in your custom module, which, which installs PowerShell first. And you, yeah. there's a trick to do this probably would be to, I'm assuming you have an admin account, all your customers accounts, right? We do. What I would do is when that module installs, installs, of course, a flow. So like up on the project, it installs a flow. That flow can be called by an API, which kicks off and does installs PowerShell. And then after that, you can then use that same imported project to do other things like, okay, I need to import this project for PowerShell. Because there's no way that Sessions knows without that module installed that upload the PowerShell functionality to have the projects. Right, because if I don't, because if I have a PowerShell script in a flow and I try to import it without having that installed, it's going to bomb, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. You're going to you're going to run into order operations issues there, unfortunately. Yeah. The one thing you could do is you know create your custom module which does installs everything, and then kick off a workflow, which you have on every one of your client's machine that you import a project that says, am I utility flows? And that second utility flow is, okay, I need to upload a new PowerShell. That's a way to do it. It's a two-step process. Install your module, which installs all the, all the custom modules, everything you need. And then you have a second, you know, project. Like in every one of our projects, I have what I call utility flows. You know, flows that just do more management stuff, like create users, all of those. And then have that for every one of your clients that's on there that one of them is upload PowerShell project. And you call that flow and send the PowerShell script through an API. It's one way to do it. Mm, okay. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll give that a go. Uh, I see, I haven't looked into this, but I assume that there's a, so I, let's say in my first one, I basically have that just to install, install the modules that I need to install. Right. And then once I have PowerShell installed, I can bring over other things mm -hmm. and I can, uh, so once I create a, a, a PowerShell project, I can create scripts inside that, right? Yep. Um, and I can import the entire project with all like that. I can associate that PowerShell project to another project, call it like, like startup components, right? And yep. if I import startup components project, it will import that. PowerShell project and all of its associated scripts with it too, right? Right. Okay. Okay. I got gotcha. you. All right. Yeah. Okay. We'll give that a try. I think that may be all I had for today. Okay. Awesome. Sorry, and I guess if, if you sorry wanna... if those were too easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you have questions as you're going through and working on some of the stuff that we helped you out with today, go ahead and let us know um, or join in um, next week on another Lunch and Learn as well, too. Um, if you don't have anything else for us today, now that we've answered um, all your questions here, um, I think we are good to go ahead and call it a day for the Lunch and Learn. Cool. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks for hopping on, Tyler. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much, David. Let us know if you need anything else, okay? All righty. Y'all have a good one. Thank you, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.